We all know black holes exist, right? What if I told you that they might help us understand how our universe formed? Space-time is mapped with geodesics, a type of grid lines, and masses bend space-time in proportion to their mass. Let's imagine a rabbit and a cow. While a rabbit is only able to bend a little, a cow would form a huge bend in space-time. Roger Penrose came up with the idea that all black holes, no matter what type they were, had to contain singularities. Each black hole has an event horizon, this is the point of no return. Just like horror movies, once you cross that line, there's no turning back. What about singularities? A singularity is formed when a gravitational field becomes infinite, when matter is forcibly compressed into a point. And he proved it by showing that space-time literally comes to an end inside the black hole, and that was called geodesic incompleteness. A path followed by light is called null geodesic, and null geodesics which are traveling into or past a gravitational field are united or converged. This is called gravitational lensing. Once the null geodesics pass the event horizon, they go downwards and converge, but the ones going up will also converge. Don't let the idea of event horizon trick you. Remember what I said, point of no return. Penrose didn't get tricked and came up with the idea of a trapped surface. No null geodesic was going upwards, it was always going downwards to the center. What was going upwards was the trapped surface. Once the null geodesics reached the focus, it would be meaningless to track them because the idea of space-time would end there. Later on, Stephen Hawking went on and showed that Roger Penrose's ideas were also valid for the universe. Geodesics traced backwards in time had to truly meet in order to form a singularity and there was no way to track time beyond this point which meant our universe started from that exact point.